So um, one of the things we, uh, we do on this stream is we go back and we watch a lot of old school, like we watch a lot of old school content. Like we were just watching, like I said, you and Brown. Do you have any favorite memories or moments, you know, from the early UFC MMA days that come to mind? Uh, not really. I mean, the, it, everything just kind of ties in. I mean, obviously, I remember uh, first fights in the UFC, but I'd always be always excited about what was going on at Pride. It seemed like Pride was kind of like doing some big events, and you never knew might be a huge guy versus a small guy. I mean, just uh, Fedor versus whoever, you yeah. know, like. Cop was in there knocking people out, but I just remember always looking forward to uh, seeing what Pride was doing. Remember when you went ham on Coleman when we were training that time, and the first time he tried to pummel with you, and you just went Energizer Bunny on him? <laughs> oh, yeah. He was worn out. It was actually kind of funny. So, like, he was going through his circuit, and they're like, get in there and, like, uh, kind of hand fight with him. He was probably at the end of his workout, and I was, like, pummeling, kind of getting after him. I was – just graduated from high school and I'm thinking, man, I want to shoot in there and take him down. I'm like, man, he's got some big old hips. So <laughs> I remember you put the work hips. on him. You put the work on him and he was like, whoa, because you was that energizer bunny that he just started pumping, pumping, pumping. He's just like, and he's like, whoa. He thought he was gonna be way too big and you just were putting the work to him. And it's I remember he had that shocked look on his face, like, where did this kid come from? <laughs> it was <laughs> uh. I can hand fight. I mean, uh, I think that's one thing that's really good with MMA and, and a lot of fighters need to do that a little bit more hand fight, start wearing people out, tugging, pulling. It's almost non-existent nowadays, but, uh, back in the day, it seemed like that's how you'd wear people down and break people down a little bit. Yeah, it sucks. That I, I mean, I know I got away from it. I know I think at one point we got really into the whole striking. We had the, the, the striking, and then it was ground, and all that in between. Something that we used to be pretty wild about, you know, in the old racquetball court and stuff, was all that yep. clinching and that dirty boxing. As you're getting older, is that something back in there, Put a, get a hand heavy on the head and, and kind of be that backpack or no? Uh I usually, uh, if we have wrestlers going in that I'm working with, I'm like, hey, get in there, start pummeling. Uh, but it's one of those things where even wrestlers, they don't feel comfortable in there. They're either because uh, they think they're going to be getting punched. It's almost like they either want a lot of space or they're in, in on takedowns. So it's actually hard to work those positions with uh, – guys going live you definitely we had really good training partners so we'd get in there and, and work and not worry about getting hit just so we'd be in the pocket pushing on elbows like punches you know just those types of things you have to have good training partners for those things and have to uh drill those constantly yeah. to so they're actually i think they're resting positions where you're almost using your weight putting weight on them, pummeling, just dirty boxing in those positions, but you're wearing the guy down. A lot of people uh, can can get broken in those spots, so I think it's really good good uh, to work on. Yeah, I don't know why I got away from but it's definitely something that I'd love to do is get back in there, get that collar tie, heavy on the head, you know, grab the old cow lick and just sit there and wear on him and wear on him, stab on the head. Like I remember getting Militich that one time we were doing the takedowns and I wouldn't let him take me down so he, and he had to tap out because I kept getting heavy on the head, heavy on the head and I wouldn't give up the takedown and that was one of those things we like to try to do, break this, you know what I mean, break that back. Yeah. It's weird how we get away from that now. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 basic. I mean, I remember back in the day watching wrestlers just tugging, pulling, shoving, cranking, and just and just wearing people out. It's almost like there's everyone's too quick to to score points. I feel like those those positions, you're like you want to torture the guy a little bit yep. in, in situations, just like the front headlock position. I don't necessarily want to run behind you and score i might just stay here and be heavy and put pressure on you and torture you there a little bit before i force you to let me go behind you 
Well, and that's what I know. See, and that's what I love about it. It's like, and I tell people all the time is we would just sit there. There's nowhere to go. We're in total dominance. We're sitting out yep. in front, especially when we used to be able to have knees on the ground. So just kind of why go anywhere, right? Why go off to a side, stay right there, be heavy, rip some lefts or rights to the belt, you know, into the sides yep. and make them work their ass off. And I think that's something I know I had to do just to try to survive. You were really fast and athletic and Matt was really had that tendon strength, but, and it's like, you'd get into a position like that and there's just no reason to leave right and just sit there and hold that and i just sit out there on that front and make them work right exactly put all that extra weight on them and if they want to get out of there just make it <laughs> hard for them i'm not gonna go behind you i'm gonna torture you here and put my weight on you and force you to go back to neutral somehow so yeah i think it's uh all that good stuff we used to do, it, it's I'm still uh, bringing that to the table, coaching these guys at uh, Sanford MMA. So it's, but it's all basic wrestling stuff where you think, hey man, just do this. You're like, yeah, it is that easy. Just like, but I don't know the- why. I, it's like, why didn't I do that or why did I stop doing that? But it's really just. Boom, you grab a hold of them and you just kind of, you know where they're at. You can, you don't have to look right at them. You got the feel, right? You're sitting there and you're controlling one. It's like, we used to do it all the time, and somehow we get away from it. I don't know if it's maybe the idea we want to be exciting or, you know, whatever it is. It's I'm not 100% sure whatever did it, but it's like, like you said, I always want to go for that quick punch or land that one big knockout or, you know, or get that submission. Or But it's all yep. that middle, and I think that's a big game changer, you know, this day and age. If somebody were to bring that in there and get back into that dirty boxing, that backpack style, and get really heavy, I think they could change the game a little bit. I think so too. I, I mean, it comes down to, to that pressure. I mean, it's uh, to, to get good there. You actually have to have decent uh, defense too. So yeah. like really you only have one hand here. So you have to make sure you're tucking your shoulder in there and, and kind of have your eyes open and kind of get a feel for that. I don't think a lot of guys uh, feel comfortable in there. I think a lot of guys are out here yep. or here, yep. out here. And, and then the in between, they're not so comfortable. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think that really played in with us, especially back in the day when we were the power, because we had really good strikers and we had to take them down or we would go against the black belt jujitsu guy and our job was to sprawl and brawl and keep them up, which kind of kept us heavy on that head. You know what I mean? And sit out there on that sprawl and make the jujitsu guy power his way back up or we're trying to land those shots and make them take shots and we punish them, you know what I mean, for trying to take us down or vice versa. If they're really good up top, no point going ground body lock them up and you know and and take away that time things like that yeah that's one thing that we're we're basically keeping the fights in certain scenarios that that we're good at and i think some guys get away from that it's like hey man you're strong here you're a wrestler how about you just do this and don't let his ass move? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's and I say it on the stream and I love it because I sit there and now this is my version of being a coach. And I just sit back and I'm like, there's no reason to move from right here. And it just reminds me of the old Militich. You're in good position. Why lose it? Keep it, stay yep. heavy right here and make them do the work, right? And it's like, don't give them, like, oh, God forbid, if we sat back for a guillotine, we're all in trouble. You know, what I mean? we're yep. all in trouble. <laughs> Like a lot of these guys, they feel comfortable like in half guard, which is fine. It's, yeah. it's a decent control. But usually when you're in half guard, they put you back in full guard. So now you're paying half guard, full guard, half guard, full guard. So I'd always play side mount, half yeah. guard. So I'd go there. I didn't really want mount, but sometimes you'd be forced to go there. It's almost like if you're – kind of playing in half guard and full guard, you're not able to put that extra weight on that guy. So I think like, especially with wrestlers, like I'm like, Hey, if, if you get a takedown, I want you to pass right away. Yeah. Like I want you to pass. And if you can not let him roll to his back even better. And if he does roll to his back, then I want you in side control. hundred percent. Catch him in transition, right? Exactly. Control where the fight's going. It's not just, oh, I got to take down. Let's boom. And now we're in guard. guard. Yeah. And, and it's one guy. of those things you always tell people. It's like, yeah, right when you get as the, that, that moment where you land, that, that initial 
impact, right? Boom. Yep. And then you can do the quick adjustments out to the side, turn to the head, you know what I mean? Little things like that, but always, those are the best times. And then once we get it hunkered down and solid, now it becomes a muscle game, right? Now we're trying to create, lift up that mo- you know, lift them up, move them, and try to create the space so that we can move again. And it's the same thing, right? It's always come out, always circle towards the head, always, you know what I mean? Always coming after it, yep. but yeah, I love it. See, man? It's almost- Guys get away from just like almost just they don't realize that just pin the guy. Yeah, you're really chest to chest. You're pinning him. There's no sense in be, being in guard if if or half guard. It's just kind of like uh, you're getting attacked. You're doing a lot of holding and pulling. If you can build up to a better position, then you're going to start wearing on the guys. And I think uh, that's one thing that we did a lot at Militich, like. Basically, we, I would actually, I got tortured for like probably three years by Hughes at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> underhook series, and you'd be freaking side control pinned down, and you're like, seriously, like this is terrible. <laughs> okay. I better start fighting for these inches and not the end. See, I yeah, love you like, to say that because that's it. The, the inches, because you can't, you're not going to get a big burst on Hughes. No. And as he no. sits down and you're like, you might be able to get a hand in and maybe just start to bump a little bit. And then I think that's where a lot of people going against someone like Matt, why they would always get tired, especially that first time. They're not used, they don't realize, right? They're, they're burning their energy and they're like, dude, he's in absolute cruise control, just flexing on you. And we would learn like, okay, little bits, little movement, little movement. And you see people that just go out there and they would go ham and they're like, oh, you're going to burn yourself out going against this kid. You yeah, got to get in his face. Fight for those inches. And if you don't fight for those inches, all of a sudden you're like, it's too late. And he's in a great position and you're worn out. So it's, you live by uh, getting tortured, I think. I think I, I got a lot of uh, torturing at uh, Militich and I'm better for it. <laughs> hey, speaking of torture, do you remember, like, who were the fighters back in the day? I still bring it up. Like, we used to watch all the boxing and, like, the young Michael Moore with the movement. I always tell people, you and I used to just study that when it came to head movement, movement, footwork, and angles, and we were always watching it. You remember sitting back and we'd have those different fighters, like a young Evander Holyfield. Let some of these guys know with like a couple of the boxes we re- used to really like watching back then i always grew up watching tyson but then i'd, I'd actually get uh vhs's from uh dana white like he'd have like a huge selection of fights i'd be like all right let me get this i take I'd, <laughs> like old holy filled fights like when he was at uh 160 168 uh who else would i watch obviously uh Michael Moore. Yeah, when he was younger, just a lot of that move. But you and I, that was something we were addicted to. And I always try to tell people, you and I, we just loved that head movement. We loved the idea of feints. We love cutting those angles. And when everybody kind of talks about the, the big, the old... MFS days of sparring, I was like, yeah, but that's you and I would just get, we were addicted to the idea of just moving and trying to cut these angles and, and have so much fun trying to figure that out. You know, watching the younger guys, like someone put a Gotti out there and stuff like that. Just a lot of that movement. I mean, do you still stick with that when you're drilling and training a lot of the movement and the feints? I, I do, but like, I would say it's definitely harder, especially at our gym and like where the sport's gone to. It's definitely more of a out here. Yeah. Like it's way out here. So it's, it's definitely, you have to be a little quicker and get in there into those spots. And like, normally when I'm in those spots, it's like, okay, I feel good, but then guys are gone again. So it's like, you don't, guys definitely don't hang out there because they're not comfortable there. So it's, uh, so we worked it a lot. Uh, I'll work with it. If I have a good uh, sparring partner, I'll work. But, I mean, I'm really good there. So it's like they don't really want to play there. Even if I'm going light, it's like, okay, this isn't fun. Like They hate it. They don't want to get caught by <laughs> you. They don't want you doubling up on the same hand, tagging that liver. Yeah, I'm just playing and, like, moving and feeling. It's just like one of those things, if, if you haven't done it, like we used to do it all the time, just yeah. like twisting, turning just going light but like 
feel uncomfortable and cutting angles. And I remember Pat used to have us do drills where we step right, swing your leg, step the other way, step, just whoop. And then all of a sudden you're in there. It's easy. Just And that's what I always try to show wrestlers. It's like the same thing that you do when you hit a double, like a little elbow pass. It's yeah. the same thing to do as a fighter to get that angle for punching. Yeah. It's angles, getting those little quarter turns and getting those angles where you're safe. You can blow through the guy. And, and here's the things you need to look out for in these spots. So it's like, all right, just – Let's get you over here so you feel comfortable. Let's get you over here so you feel comfortable. And when you get over here, here's what you have to look out for. You get over here, here's what you need to worry about. And, and that's kind of just breaking down the game and, and trying to get these guys uh, ready for these fights. But uh, it's hard to get these guys comfortable because they're uh, trying to – Highlight reels. When, when they're trying to win a title at every practice kind okay. of thing. Okay, okay. I, get, I mean, I get it. So – like okay, you won, but today or whatever, you know. It's yeah. like, well, like, put yourself in these shitty situations where you can start figuring stuff out. And they get pissed off, and they don't want to do it, or you know, I mean, get a little angry and stuff. Yeah, so, well, they well they don't feel comfortable, so it's like, and then they're like, "Well, this is working." It's like, all right. Yeah, they don't want to be uncomfortable, right? They don't want to be uncomfortable yeah. at all and learn how to, like, the more you work on it, then all of a sudden you become comfortable and that uncomfortable and they just, yep. no, I want to do this. My kicks work. I like to stay out yep. here and run. I don't like to feel that burn in my chest. What is that? Well, that's cardio. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. You know? <laughs> at point in time, everything might not go as planned. Yeah. <laughs> so here's, like, a little piece over here and here's a little piece over there. So it's just trying to trying to show guys as, as much as I can of uh, everything I've learned over the years. So, I mean, it's fun. I'm still learning too, like uh, with my wrestling, just like little things here and there. And it's fun. So is coaching yeah. and passing on you enjoying this being the, being the, it's crazy me saying this to you being the older fighter. I mean, you've always been my little brother. It's just weird to have this conversation, but are you, are you kind of, you seem like you're fitting into that role of mentoring and becoming a coach. A little yeah, bit no, as well. It's actually uh, fun. I mean, that's what sport is. I mean, like someone gave this information to me and now it's time for me to give it back to somebody else so that we can continue to get better and, and evolve. And, and uh, that's just what sport's all about. And I think uh, that's what makes MMA uh, great. That's what makes sports awesome. It's like being able to give back because somebody gave it to me. I didn't learn all this, yeah. like all this up one day. And like, I had all this knowledge. It was given to me by really good training partners and really good coaches. So it's like, let's share the wealth. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, it's one of those things. I don't want to keep you for too much longer, man. It's just, it's cool to rap with you. I just, I'm glad, man. It's just really cool to just hear you talking. How much, I don't want to say this because I'm saying this as, as your older brother aspect when I ask this. It's just how much longer do you want to do this? Are you having fun? Uh, yeah, no, I'm having fun. It's just like, let's, if we find a good fight, let's go out there. My body feels good. It's just like for me to put in the time away from my family, like obviously from 2013 to 2017, I was – go 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 doing my thing so now it's like all right if there's a good fight where i can get out there and take my time away from my family and go out there and have some fun so that's what it comes down to my body feels good i'm ready to fight it's just right time right place right opponent and let's get after it but i think i i mean you never know one day i might just be like yep i'm done <laughs> but you know that's just how how i am i mean but you won't hear that's why you got me laughing, because that's exactly, I mean, that's exactly, you're just be like, yeah, I'm done. That's it, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> just, that'll be it. We'll be done. And, and then no yep. fuss, no muss. You get any, you, you seem to have been getting better doing the interviews and stuff, though. You don't mind them as much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I don't want to do them. And sometimes I'm like, all right, let's get out there and like, 
talk a little bit. <laughs> all right. Well, see, that's what I do all day long. And real quick, because we met, we're going to watch another one of your fights. And so we're always going back. Like I said, we're on Fight Pass. I'm on the Twitch uh, TV slash UFC, and we're always watching fights. Is there one fight back in the day that we can watch of Robbie Lawler that you, if there was, if you have one off the top of your head, is there that one fight? Like, hey, watch this one. Um, I mean, uh, people always like, probably when I was at my best was either when I was having the, probably the most fun was, uh, Hendrix number one. Okay. I was really enjoying that fight. He was doing his thing, scoring points. And I was just like in there playing and it was, it was a fun fight for me. Uh, that one was good. Obviously, the Rory McDonald uh, fight. Number. We've played that one. We've played that so many times because that's still that's the greatest Robbie Lawler moment in life. The yell, the lip hanging. Who? I mean, that's just that's that's the Bob. I'm like, oh my god, you know? What I mean, that, that's Robbie right there. Yeah, no, that was a, I felt really good. I mean, I think it would have been nice to not get that little uh, foot behind the head and things would have worked out a lot better. But I think uh, that's what made that fight great was when Rory uh, took it to me a little bit, stunned, wobbled me a little yeah. with that kick. Yeah. Uh, that elbow. So, I mean, that's what it's all about bouncing back and trying to figure out a way to win when you're a little uh, dazed. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, hey, real quick, so I'll let you go. Um, I want to thank you for your time, brother. You know that is socials. How do how do all these people in chat? How do they get a hold of you? Uh, they don't. Okay, so Instagram, nothing. <laughs> I knew I knew he was gonna be like, nah, I ain't gonna no. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> That's why I love you, dude. Oh my God, I love you, Bob. That's all right, my man. Hey, I'll leave it be. We'll we'll figure out socials on another day. Hey, seriously yeah. though, thank you so much for your time, buddy. I appreciate you, and I'll be in touch. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Let's do this every once in a while. You let me know whenever. I don't want to bug you, so we we'll have to. I would love to come down. I need a I need a visit. Oh, gaming. Yep. Are you still gaming a little bit? Do we game? Do we get nah, down? Uh, I gave up a lot of stuff. I <sighs> gave up. Uh, video game so what happened you know i used to be in the madden yes remember so, you'd wake me up it's your turn yeah, you got to play like, your two games but i don't even remember what year it was it was like you know i'm into it i'm yeah. playing games like all night and like all of a sudden they switched how you threw the ball you could like throw it in front of the guy in the dirt up high behind the guy but then you could switch to the receiver and then adjust you and could was, adjust you could you could adjust as a receiver, and I was like, I know how much work I put into being good. Yep. I'm not put in that kind of work anymore. He's done. <laughs> You're not gonna do that. You're I'm not gonna like, do that I'm, grind. <laughs> like if I'm not gonna do it right. I'm not gonna do it at all. Oh so my just, god, I love you. Like we'd have to do the college season. I would tell everybody. Yep. I'm like, but then we just had it had to do its own. We just had to let it play out because you were too damn good. Yep. But I was like, I tell you, I tell people all the time. It's my favorite story. Is hey, it's your turn, huh? You got it. It's your turn. I'm like, oh my god. All right, all right. I'll pop up. <laughs> in the morning be like hey man you gotta play your game <laughs> oh god i love you bob i'll talk to you again my friend say hello to the yep. family all right 